So now we move on to some things we know about cancer, because the number one thing that I got out of writing the poultry book is that if you want to get cancer, it's a better way to get cancer than any other disease. And I can tell you something, I don't know anyone that actually seeks out cancer, although it's becoming more, more and more prominent. Now, I wrote a series of books for the eggheads, for the scientists. You know, the scientists, when I would be out over the last 40-some years lecturing at universities and medical groups, holistic medical groups, they'd always say, well, you don't have science on this. And, you know, you're going to hear a lot of the guys here regurgitate science because that's what they do. They don't do the work. They read other people's science and regurgitate it. And so I got a little angry about that. And so I sat down a number of years ago and I wrote a three-volume academic series that all it is is science. And by the way, most of you sitting here, most of you listening, you'd hate these books because all it is is pure science. I hated writing them, but I needed to do it. Because yeah. it's just one study after another study after another study after another study, another study, blah, 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 study after study. But it's what these people do. So they sit around and they say, well, look at how much we know because we know everyone else's research and that's all we need to do. And this series is called Food is Medicine. And what I do is I focus very much on phytonutrients. Anyone know what a phytonutrient is? Well, I can tell you one thing. You don't find it in chicken. You don't find it in ducks. You don't find it in turkeys. You don't find it in eggs. You find it in plants. So where the healthy little chicken that was out in the wild would get disease-resisting nutrients is from eating raw plants. And you can get the same thing. You don't have to eat the chicken and think you're going to get that. You basically go to the raw plant and eat it. So phytochemicals play a role and well-documented role in protecting human health. As revealed by the results of test tube and animal experiments, human studies, and clinical trials. That's what we've been doing, by the way, since the doors of Hippocrates opened. We didn't know that, by the way. We didn't know that probably till the mid-1990s. We didn't know why what we did worked was because of what now I'm talking about, phytochemicals. And how many of you understand how profoundly impressive this scientific discovery was? But let me go back and give you a little history, because I've repeated this in the past, but I think it's so important that you know this, I'm going to repeat it again. That in 1948, by mere chance, by mistake, a scientist was looking at his microscope. He saw, when he was looking at vegetables and fruits, elements coming from them and attacking the bacteria that was naturally on the Petri dish and killing the bacteria. And he thought, I must be seeing something. So he brought his friends and colleagues in. They looked at it. They said, no, this is all real. And they called it phytochemicals or later phytonutrients. Nobody did anything with it because we were in the time of chemistry. You know, we had the time of Aquarius in the 60s. Well, now we were in the 70s, and the 70s were the time of chemistry. Chemistry was going to save the world. Now what chemistry has done is destroy the world, so you know that. And don't worry. Be optimistic. Now we're in the time of quantum biology and quantum physics, but the scientific community has to figure that out. Most of them don't agree with that because they make their money on old school nonsense, chemistry, etc. But with this said, they started to look at ways that disease may be affected. Your NIH, believe it or not, put great money and great effort in the 1980s in this country doing good work on plant medicine because they realized the future of humanity and our health and our survival depended upon not creating chemistry anymore, so quietly started to fund major studies on biology and discovered that each edible plant uniquely has a different chemistry in it. Isn't that nice? Now, this is profound. Those New Agers out here listen very closely. You're going to love this part. So these plants go back millions, hundreds of millions of years. And encoded into those plants were medicines that would help your species that's only been in our form for 10,000 years. I'll repeat it again. So plant chemistry called phytochemicals were encoded by the universe, God, whatever you want to call it, into plants to heal your homo sapiens species that has only been around for this last 10,000 years. Now, if that's not cosmic, I don't know what is. That's a real omer. Mmm. <laughs> on that one. Interesting stuff, isn't it? So now, people always say, well, you know, major universities aren't interested in this. No. 
Scientists are not interested in this. Nutritionists are not interested in it. Medical doctors are not interested. But major, major universities where I get most of my data from, by the way. They do great studies. I'll never forget a few years ago, I was in a, in a uh, medical group speaking, and this doctor started to almost boom me and criticize. Oh, you're not talking about real science. And so anyway, I quoted a study that was done not only at his university, but on the same floor of his university. And I said, gentlemen, I think what you need to do is pick up off your chair, get off your fat ass, walk down the hallway and talk to the doctor who published his study two years ago. That's what closed-mindedness does. Under the auspices of the brightest, I've learned, are the most closed-minded. The worst people I lecture to are alternative doctors. They really think they have it down. Corvallis, Oregon. You ever hear Linus Pauling? Pretty impressive guy. So impressive, the only man in history that won Nobel Prizes for two, two totally unique subjects. I had the privilege to meet him twice, never knew him. He was a really interesting personality, because not only was he incredibly bright, but he was incredibly kind and down to earth. You know, usually really bright guys like that, they're interesting, but that's it. He was interesting and nice. Interesting and nice is better than just interesting. Well, here's what the Linus Pauling Institute said. Uh, they used to be at Stanford, off the campus of Stanford in Palo Alto. Uh, out of respect, after Linus Pauling passed on, they moved it back to his alma mater, Oregon State University. And they discovered yet another reason why sulforaphane compounds in broccoli and other cruciferous vegetables is so medicinal. It provides not just one, but two ways to prevent cancer through the complex mechanism of epigenetics. So... In the United States, very rarely do, do we do epigenetic studies, lifestyle and chemistry studies out of food. They have done it. Matter of fact, I am so impressed with them, I brought the number one authority in the world on phytochemicals to Hippocrates. And if you do our online program, he's part of our faculty. The top scientists in the world are part of the faculty on our online program. And whenever we can get them to come into Hippocrates in Florida, we bring them in. And his name is Dr. David Williams. And Dr. Williams, when he came, had tears in his eyes, and he said, I didn't think anyone read my science. I said, let me tell you, Dr. Williams, you're the man that validates everything we've done here for over 60 years. You're our hero. Because he's basically telling the truth. And what he says is, once you cook a food, these medicines are gone. The world's leading authority out of the most impressive organization on the planet called the Linus Polling Institute on this. Epigenetic, an increased focus of research around the world, refers not just to our genetic code, but also the way that diet, toxins, and other environmental factors change gene expression. Now, we used to think genes took generations to change. Now we know in quantum biology, I write about this in an upcoming book, Quantum Human Biology, that literally your attitude changes genes less than a second. If I go, ha, your genes just changed. Fact not fiction. It appears that DNA, methylation, and HDAC inhibit both of wi inhibitors, which both of which can be influenced by sulforaphane, when working in concert with each other, maintain proper cell function. Isn't that interesting? They, they sort of work as partners and talk to each other. So now we know that these complex chemistries that came hundreds of millions of years before your species literally know how to prevent diseases that didn't exist 200 years ago. Boy, that's good stuff, isn't it? At least to me, this is interesting. <laughs> Another pretty impressive place. Ann Arbor, Michigan. How many of you are from Michigan here? How many of you are listening in Michigan? You're probably in front of a fire with five blankets on top of you this time of year. A compound derived from broccoli could also help to prevent and treat cancers by targeting cancer stem cells. The small number of cells that fuel a tumor's growth, according to a new study from researchers at the University Comprehensive Kel uh, Cancer Program. The study tested sulforaphane, a compound in broccoli and broccoli sprouts in both mice and cell cultures. Cell cultures are human cultures, so you know that. Researchers found sulforaphane target and killed the cancer stem cell and prevented new tumors from growth. So now what we're saying, not only does it prevent cancer and help reverse normal cancer, it stops new cancer cells from growing, so that means the metastasize of cancer. 
So how come I'm telling you here at The Real Truth About Health, you should be eating broccoli sprouts every single day, and your doctor doesn't tell you that? Even if you have the greatest doctor in the world, they don't know this. And they don't bother to read this because it's not mainstream literature. It's from the best scientific organization. The best scientist organization and best scientists and best scientific organizations are never read, by the way. After they die, they say, isn't that brilliant what they discovered 20 years ago? <laughs> That's what always happens. It's nothing to do with reality. So furfane has been studied previously for its effect on cancer, but this study shows that it benefits in inhibiting breast cancer stem cells. The new insights suggest the potential is for furfane and broccoli extract to prevent or treat cancer by targeting critical cancer cell studies.